People say you can't live without love, but believe me, oxygen is more necessary. We don't realize its importance as we get it for free. Imagine if one day, all the trees disappear and we have to buy oxygen. This happened in a town named Ithneedville. Not a single plant exists in this town and everything is just plastic. The houses, the roads, and even the fake trees are made up of inorganic materials. These trees don't produce oxygen, but act as lamps. While oxygen is delivered to each house by a company called O'Hare Air, and it's not free. Everyone has to pay to breathe. It's been so many years since this revolution that people have gotten used to this lifestyle. They don't even bother to question it or try to change it. The O'Hare Air is owned by the town's mayor, Aloysius O'Hare. He is, of course, the richest man living his life in luxury. Ted Wiggins also lives in this town. He's a young teenage boy who's just experienced the first touch of love. His crush is a beautiful girl named Audrey. She considers Ted her best friend and takes him to show how she painted her backyard. Ted admires the effort but wonders about the candy-like things drawn by Audrey. She calls her the real trees, which used to exist really long ago. Audrey's biggest wish is to see a tree and if a guy could bring that for her, she will marry him right away. This is a great opportunity for Ted. He rushes back to his house and asks his mother where he can find a tree. She scolds him for thinking nonsense and walks away. However, Ted's grandma is willing to help. She mentions a man called Wunzler, who knows everything about the real trees. He's a mysterious guy living outside the town who offers secrets in exchange for two cents, a nail, and an old snail. Ted rushes immediately to the exit gate. On the other side, there's a completely different world. A deserted place with no sign of life at all. Driving his one-tired bike, Ted proceeds to the address Grandma gave. It's on the other side of a destroyed bridge. Reaching there, he finds the street of the lifted Lorax. The smog sets away, revealing a scary abandoned house. The door tag reads Wunzler's name. As Ted rings the bell, a trap throws him up in the air and a huge hook catches him. The scary old man is peeking from the window. He warns Ted not to come to him ever again, but Ted is determined and asks what happened to the real trees. Hearing the word trees drives Wunzler's attention. He blames himself for destroying all the trees. It happened a long time ago when Wunzler was just a young, enthusiastic boy. He sat out on a journey to find the right material for his new invention. After traveling for several days, he finally reached a place worthy of being called paradise. It had singing fish, dancing bears, exotic birds, crystal clear water, and fluffy colorful trees. Wunzler took out his guitar and started to sing out of joy. The animals were also vibing with him. Wunzler found a good spot and began unpacking carelessly. The animals didn't like the behavior and got angry, but Wunzler got a trick under his sleeve. He opened big sacks of squishy, delicious marshmallows. The animals had never eaten something so delicious. After the feast, Wunzler picked up his axe and caught off a tree. Little did he know he had summoned a mythical creature. It's the guardian of a forest named Lorax. Unlike his title, he's just a little orange guy with a huge mustache. Lorax got really angry over the incident and felt sorry for the dead tree. Afterward, he went to find Wunzler and told him to leave the forest right away. Wunzler didn't seem to care at all and refused to stop his business. Lorax warns him about a curse that's after him, but the Wunzler didn't take that seriously either. What happened next was totally unexpected. Ted is hearing this story carefully, but the old man refuses to continue. If he wants to know more, Ted has to come to see Wunzler again the next day. After returning home, Ted daydreams about Audrey's birthday. He's there too, presenting an alive tree. They were about to kiss when his mom brought him back to reality. Ted has to meet Wunzler again, but he's forced to spend the weekend with his family. Fortunately, his mom gets bored and moves to her room so Ted gets a chance to sneak away. But he gets blocked by O'Hare at the exit gate. The greedy mayor doesn't want anyone to learn to grow trees, otherwise no one will buy his packed oxygen. He warns Ted not to mess with him as he's keeping an eye on every citizen. But the lover boy isn't backing up at any cost. After O'Hare leaves, Ted gets out of town again. Wunzler is quite shocked to see him again. He knows Ted is doing it for a girl. A boy does a stupid thing once because he's a boy, but if he does it twice, it's for a girl. Saying this, Wunzler continues his story. During his first night in the forest, the Lorax teamed up with the animals and carried Wunzler along with his bed. Then he threw him in the river. Accidentally, a baby bear was left in the bed too. Lorax rushed to save the bear and climbed up the tree, but he didn't succeed. The bed flowed into the shallow water and Wunzler woke up. He started to panic and kept trying to defeat the dangerous water waves. Finally, the bed got a little steady, but the waterfall was just a few inches away. Lorax picked up a stick and used it to throw a huge stone in the direction of the waterfall. It hit the bed and Wunzler was thrown out of the river. Lorax got worried after seeing him unconscious. He used static electricity to wake him up. Wunzler felt grateful for the act of kindness and promised not to cut down another tree ever again. The next morning, he woke up surrounded by all the animals. They were contaminating all of his belongings. Wunzler got angry and decided to leave for marketing his business. Using the fir tree, he made a fabric piece called Thneed that can be used in multiple ways. As a scarf, as a rug, as a towel, and a lot more. Lorax made fun of his weird invention and predicted its failure. He was right. 
Everyone also made fun of Wansler's invention. He lost his heart and threw away the Thneed. It accidentally fell over the head of a beautiful girl. She looked really trendy and now everyone else needs a Thneed too. Unaware of his success, Wansler is living his life with the forest animals. Suddenly, a crowd of people marched his way while requesting a Thneed. He's about to get rich. Wansler leaves the story of the cliffhanger again. The next day after visiting the market, Ted tries to get out of the town again, but O'Hare has sealed the door. Ted looks around and finds a cloud-high building. He uses it to jump out of the town boundaries. He gifts Wunzler a bag of marshmallows and hears the rest of the story. After successful marketing, Wunzler invited his family to help him. They were actually a bunch of greedy and lazy people who always degraded Wunzler. They were just after the money the business could produce. Lorax didn't like them at all, but Wunzler assured the safety of trees. The harvesting began, but Wunzler's mother found it too tiring and slow. She suggested chopping down a few trees and Wunzler agreed. Lorax reminded him of the promise and called him a bad guy, but the greediness for success didn't let Wunzler back off. He picked up his guitar and started singing a song about not being too bad. He believed that he was just following his destiny. Just like any other businessman, he only thought about profit and money. His greediness didn't let him see the destruction he was causing. His factory got bigger day by day, the pollution spread all throughout the air, the water got contaminated, and the fish couldn't survive. The animals weren't left with any food either. Meanwhile, Wunzler had built a huge luxurious mansion with a spacious office. Lorax came to meet him and told him how he changed. He got everything but still wanted more. Wunzler had become a totally different person and forgot the promise he made. Lorax felt sorry for him but Wunzler believed he wasn't doing anything illegal and nothing could stop him. As soon as he said that, the last tree was chopped down. There was no more left. Wunzler's need business is finished. His family left him and the animals migrated to find a better place. Lorax also flew back to where he came from. Wunzler was all left alone in the polluted environment he created. To this day, he's still repenting for his mistakes. He also wonders why Lorax left without fixing up the mess. But now he believes he left the big task for a courageous boy like Ted. Wunzler has the last seed to grow a tree. He gives it to Ted and asks him to plant it in the middle of the town where everyone can see it. He has to make people care for trees again. It may be just a little seed, but it's not what it is right now. It's all about what it can become. Ted sneaks back into the town through the drainage. He destroys the security camera, but the stubborn device still captures everything and forwards the information to O'Hare. Ted runs towards his house and on the way, he calls over Audrey as well. As he reaches his room, Ted starts looking for a way to germinate the seed. Suddenly, his mother starts calling him. She wants him downstairs immediately. While leaving in a rush, Ted hits the water bottle and it falls over the seed. O'Hare has come to meet him again. He asks Ted to hand over the seed but gets refused. O'Hare orders his men to investigate Ted's bedroom. They look through everything but can't find the seed. Ted's mother comes over and gets angry at the ill-mannered behavior. O'Hare leaves on a request, but he will keep an eye on them. After his departure, Ted starts searching for the seed. He only finds Grandma's stick. She has saved the seed. Germination has started already. It's definitely a heartwarming sight. Audrey reaches there too. She gets so excited to see a real plant for the first time in her life. Ted requests her help in planting the seed in the middle of town. But the O'Hare security guards are standing right in front of their house. It's mom's showtime. She gets into her high-tech car, turns on the music, and drives away. The guard assumes that Ted is inside the car, so he starts following it. He uses the nitro boost to speed up and hits the escaping car. Ted's mother makes a risky move and turns into a half-constructed bridge. Thankfully, she applies the brakes at the right moment. The guard happily opens the car's door, but only finds a dummy. Ted is already on his way along with Audrey and Grandma. O'Hare is not giving up either. He's flying after the seat. Ted drives through the dangerous routes and makes O'Hare collide with his own guards. Even after such accidents, O'Hare keeps following. Ted gets on the elevator and reaches the top of a tall building checks on the seat and it's totally fine. O'Hare gets angry and uses his gun to turn the oxygen fans. The wind blows away the seed. O'Hare and his men rush after it, Ted is coming for it as well. The seed lands in an oxygen container, but a van hits it and the seed gets lost again. The containers are rolling down the street. O'Hare catches up the seed container, but his hands get stuck in it. Ted is also coming that way, he almost misses the catch, but the cool grandma uses her stick to snatch away the seed. They drive to the central park and start looking for a spot to plant, but there's no mud at all. No worries. Grandma always has a solution. She gets on the tractor and hits O'Hare's statue. The hat falls down and breaks the metal ground. The public starts to question their acts. O'Hare comes over and calls the tree filthy and useless. He tries to convince the public that they don't need any trees and that photosynthesis is just a lie. Everyone goes against Ted's intention and proceeds to stop him. Ted gets on the tractor and starts hitting the town's walls. They break down, revealing the world outside. That's the hidden reality. Thneedville is just an illusion. Ted requests everyone to give a chance to trees. People start to get his point. They're tired of living a plastic life trapped inside the walls. They want to breathe fresh and free air. O'Hare makes his last effort to stop them, but people have made their choice already. With their support, Ted plants the seed and waters it. 
but in just a few more years, plants start growing everywhere. Once Slur has come out of his house as well and waters his little garden daily. Animals are coming back too, but once Slur is looking forward to someone else. His old friend, Lorax. Finally, he made his friend proud. To make the change, you have to be the change. As Dr. Seuss wrote in his book, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Ted was one of those who cared until people like him will keep existing, will keep getting free air and a world worth living in. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like and comment. Thank you.